Back to school means back to the books. It means back to note-taking and studying and learning. And in this video, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite note-taking apps for breaking down books and connecting information together in a dynamic and powerful way that really supports studying and understanding. Hello everyone, my name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. Let's go take a look at note-taking for success in school. In order to take effective notes, we really want to do four major steps. The first thing is we want to make sure we're interested in what we're studying. We want to have a why. We want to have a reason. Hopefully everybody's studying subjects you're interested in or you're able to see the value in what you're studying towards another goal. Second, we want to make sure that the notes we take are dynamic and interesting. We want to make sure they, they entice us to come back and interact with them. We don't just want to take notes that reiterate what's in the books. We want to take notes that have extra information, our thoughts and our ideas when we were reading the book so that they're valuable to us. Third, we want to connect our notes together. So we're not just studying one subject, but we're studying all of our courses and everything that we're learning in a way that relates to each other. And this might actually be the most important step because it creates context for our learning. It makes it valuable to us as a person. Finally, we want to make sure that what we do with our notes can be shared with others, even if that other is ourselves in the future. We want to be able to collaborate, use them to create materials. Maybe we want to write an essay, a blog post, create a video. Maybe we want to be able to work in a team or teach someone else. We need to make sure whatever note system we're using can support this. The app that I'll demonstrate in this video is called Scrintle, and I've been using them for a while now. They've also been kind enough to sponsor this video and help out the channel. And Scrintle has all of the features that will support the things I need to have an effective note-taking and study experience. As you can see, I have three textbooks that I'll be working on this semester. And there's a lot of content in each of them. It's actually quite heavy, right? Not only that, but I really, I want to understand the subject not as individual subjects, but how they relate to each other. I want to be able to connect the concepts from one book to another book. In my case, I'll be looking at intelligence analysis. So I'll be looking for structured intelligence analysis. I'll be looking at algorithm design. So I want to look at some algorithm design and I'll be looking at some artificial intelligence. But this could just as easily be any set of subjects related to something that you're interested in. Let's take a look at the structured analytical techniques for intelligence analysis and I'll break this book down to begin the process of how I use Scrintle for note taking. You'll see how it meets all of my criteria in terms of being a dynamic note taking environment, it is a connected note taking environment and it's a note taking environment that I can then use for a creation, sharing and collaboration. Once we break down this book, you'll see how easy it is to break down the other books and start connecting the information from one book to another and from all of these books into the outside world of resources so that I get a really connected, holistic image of what the subject matter is that I'm studying. Let's go take a look. So here I have a physical book. I want to learn the materials in this book on structured analytical techniques for intelligent analysis. Now, why do I want to learn about structured analytical techniques for intelligence analysis? It'd be better for both of us if I didn't tell you. I'm just joking. I'm actually using this for data analysis in a business setting, but it is intelligence analysis. It's quite interesting. So it's different techniques. So I want to learn this. And in, in typically in the physical world, what I would do is I would do things like use little flags in order to mark different sections of the book. This book's quite nice because it actually has flags built in, but this is unusual. Uh, I might use highlighters, and in my case, I'll often use different colored highlighters so I can categorize the knowledge. So it could be biographical knowledge, it could be technical knowledge, it could be, um, you know, a case study. I'll use different colored highlighters. A lot of times I'll use something like a post-it note. So I'll take notes on the post-it note, or I'll use index cards and I'll mark up the book. I'll even use pencils within the book. So this becomes my physical note-taking system that I would carry around with me. I still do use this sometimes just for the tactile uh, experience of going through a book. But in the digital world, I can have all of this and so much more. 
I can use my phone or I can use dedicated devices to record audio. I can use dedicated devices to record video. Let's go take a look at how I can use Scrintle to break down the table of contents, develop my mind map concept map, build up my note system, and then start populating it for the purposes of learning the intelligence analysis. So here I am logged into Scrintle. I've used a new account here just to keep things nice and clean for this demo. And I'll link down below to where you can get your own Scrintle account, as well as to another video on the channel where I show you how to get started. In this video, I'm showing you how to connect information and take effective notes. So I have my first textbook on, on intelligence analysis. And what I do is I'll go to the table of contents. Then here in Scrintle, what I'll do is I'll go into my boards and I'll create a new board on each book. You can see here, I've already created my book here on intelligence analysis. And then what I'll do is I'll create a card for each chapter of the book. And then if I have the uh, lecture notes or if I have the, the syllabus for the course, I might also create a course uh, outline here on what's being covered in each lecture. The benefit of doing that is, for example, here in lecture number one, you can see that it covers chapters one and chapters two of the textbook. So all I had to do was highlight the chapter here, click on the link, and I could actually go out to the card over here that is covered by that particular lecture. You can see now when I click on the card, I can see that chapter one and chapter two both relate to the first lecture. If I go into my note here, you can see that I've done a few things. First of all, if I drag this down just a little bit, I've gone in and typed in all of the table of contents main headings. That's going to allow me to start connecting information from one book to another very easily. I've also taken a picture using my phone, Scrintle on the phone, so I have a copy of the cover of the book. And I've even linked out to a YouTube video playlist on intelligence analysis. To do all of this, all I need to do is hit the slash button and I can do things like upload images. And if you're on your mobile device, it'll actually give you access to your camera so that you can take a picture or you can use photos that are in your photo library. I could upload a PDF. So if there's a PDF that's been handed out, I can upload it here and keep it all in one place. Uh, all sorts of different things that I can put in here in terms of uploading files and also formatting my text. When I'm finally ready to read the book, I'll actually go in and I'll start taking notes on the book. So I might say my notes and I might, you know, say I want to put in a bulleted list in here, for example. So you can see all the choices that I have here. So I might want to say, you know, safe, you know, safety is a big issue. Uh, security is a big issue, whatever the case may be. And I could start taking notes. But before I do any of that, before the semester even begins, I build this structure. Other cool things that you can do with the structure is I've also gone out and you can see that I've created a board for my algorithm, uh, algorithm book, for my artificial intelligence book. If I look at my algorithm book, and I haven't done absolutely all the table of contents here, but I created a note here called two types of thinking. If I go back to my board here for the uh, intelligence analysis, you'll notice that in chapter two, there is a section here on two types of thinking. If I want to scroll down to the bottom, I can hit the plus button. I can actually go in and insert or connect to another board or card. In this case here, two types of thinking. So I go two types of thinking. You can see here, this actually will connect out and I can take a look at it to the note that was part of my algorithm book. So you can see this starts getting concepts going and connecting to each other. So if I learn about two types of thinking in the AI course, and I learn about it in the algorithm course, and I learn about it in the intelligence analysis course, I can connect the notes from all three of those courses together and really get that 360 perspective on the two different types of thinking that we have. Now I can also go into my desktop and you can see here, this is my semester one. I could right click and add text in here. So that's how I got the header in there and uh, AI and analysis. Maybe that's what my first semester is going to be about. 
And if I wanted to, maybe I'm taking more than one course, you can see over here that I've got Introduction to Algorithms. I can just drag that right over here. And now I have my Introduction to Algorithm board here as well. Actually, that was chapter two, so I'll just remove that from the board. So if I want to, I can go in and I can remove this from the desktop because what I really wanted, if I go into my boards, I wanted my Introduction to Algorithm board to be part of my desktop. So if I go back to my desktop, you can see that I've got my Introduction to Algorithms. I can just add that in and you can see that all of those cards are now added in there. I can go there. If I want to drag the board, go up to my desktop here. I could drag the whole board over here if I wanted. And now I've got the entire board on there. I could of course go in and change the color of this to match. And I can go in and I could even create a new board or create a new card here. I have a lot of flexibility on how I'm taking my notes here and how I'm connecting these notes together. As I populate more and more of these note cards and create more boards and connect them together, use tags and all sorts of scrintle features, I begin to build a very strong learning system of notes and cards and connections and all of the things that I need in order to engage with my learning so that I learn it effectively. There are so many more things you can do with Scrintle around exporting your notes, importing your notes, a whole lot of things. Check out this video where I go into some more of the features of Scrintle and let me know how you're using Scrintle in your own studying. Stay tuned to the channel because I imagine I'll be making more videos on Scrintle to show various features and comment down below if that's something that you want to see. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.